Hey guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today I want to show some examples of how you can outplay other light tanks and then exploit being the last remaining light tank in the game. Let's go. I already made multiple light tank videos, tutorials and also guides. Feel free to check them out and I will try to link some of them in this video starting right here. Today I want to showcase some Manticore gameplay and talk about what you should do in a light tank, which is a pure support class in order to help your team to win the game. In fact, very often I see light tank players not knowing what to do. Sometimes it feels that they have one particular playstyle which does not fit to the current situation. However, if you in a if your light tank playstyle is flexible and if you can adapt to the current situation then with following some basic rules you can be the hero in almost every game and decide it for your team so let me give you some examples here we are in the first game we are spawning on Karelia and let's first of all take a look at the map and see what options we have Spawning on Karelia with the light tank in the north, you have several options. You can go to the middle, however, in my opinion, this is a huge death zone. So once you get spotted, you will most likely get taken out of the game. You can also try to win the hill alongside with your medium tanks. However, this is a super risky gameplay and you should only do this if you have a, let's say, a firepower advantage on your side, depending on the team composition. You can also try to be more, let's say, defensively and go to this position and simply try to see what is going on and then later on make an, uh, a, a particular move in order to win the game. So that is what I like to do in a light tank, especially if I have to play against multiple adversary light tanks. So as you can see, we are spawning in a tier 10 match and the special thing about this match is that we have four light tanks in each team, so eight light tanks in total. And that is something that is super important to recognize because if you have multiple light tanks in the game, you should certainly start a bit more passively. The goal for you as a light tank player is to be the last light tank remaining in the game. That is your goal because the strength of a light tank is the spotting ability and the fact that you are the most mobile tank and that you have the most concealment in the game but only compared to medium tanks and to of course heavy tanks and tank destroyers not per se against other light tanks and so what you should focus on is you should try to fight against the other light tanks help your team to take them out and then as soon as they are taken out you are the best tank in the game when it comes to spotting and to concealment and um, once you achieve this situation then you can really exploit being a light tank and um, basically spot for your team and make tons of damage so that's what you want to do so in this game as you can see i want to play super defensively at the beginning and just let let the ebr 105 do its thing looks like the ebr 105 is all is playing uh, aggressively just like uh, those weird light tanks players tend to do but i want to stay more passively and I want to see what is going on. I want to simply maintain and preserve my HP until the end of the game. All right, so unfortunately our EBR 105 has been taken out of the game. Um, maybe it is time to simply do some cross shots. No, the object, man, now it is reversing. Here we go, nice, nice shot onto the TVP. Now, once I've taken a shot, I always assume that I got spotted. So I always fall back into cover and then I simply do this until I can be super sure or damn sure that I am actually not spotted. Um, but the first thing I do is I retreat um, and then I count to three to see whether the whether six stands is started and is activated. So here you go and this uh, can really help you in order to not lose any HP. So that's what you want to do. Okay, so two of the adversary light tanks have been taken out. The EBR simply um, drove into our base and got uh, taken out, which is excellent. Sheridan is on this side of the map, is one shottable. And then 
the other lightning, the Rhyme Metal Panzerwagen, is also down to being one shotable, which is excellent. And so now it is my time to further advance. Now take a look at the map. Now my team is pretty much positioned in the north of the map. So this means that I want to go to the south and approach this hill here from the south. So once I spot those tanks, which are... Um, okay, I need to uh, fall back because, I'm, uh, because I got spotted. Uh, but what I, what I wanted to say is once I spot the tanks, which are the, the adversary tanks, which are on the hill, on the G6 or G7 position, all those tanks in the north can and will most likely take shots onto those tanks. So this is my opportunity to get assisting damage. Okay, here's the light tank. Nice. And I want to take him out. So I try to fully aim in and take a shot. And now... There's only the Sheridan, and looks like our T100LT is um, trying to take them out. No, actually not. But you know what? I think I have the spotting advantage on my side compared to the Sheridan, and so I can advance to this position. So what I now want to do is I want to spot those tanks, and I hope for support from my team. Okay, here we go. There's the Sheridan. Can I take them out? And... Oh, unfortunately... I only hit the tracks, which is super unfortunate, but he doesn't even spot me, which is good. And he drives uh, to another place on the map, so he will certainly not uh, be able to spot me. And I spot the object for the U. Now I want to get support from my teammates. Hopefully, here we go. That's what I want to see. 781 damage. Nice. And now I can approach this position. Um, most likely, the adversary tanks will fall back. Okay, here's the Celery, nice. And so I can take more damage. Um, most likely this RT player is trying to evade out of the situation, but I certainly want to um, to take him out. Okay, there's the TVP. That is super bad because now I am in deep trouble. Of course, the, the firepower of a tier 10 medium tank is much higher compared to my light tank, and so I need to hurry up and evade out of this situation so not to get killed by the TVP. All right, there's the gorilla looking into the other direction. So if I stop here, he's already turning around, so I need to hurry up, but I take one shot, and now I fall back into cover so that he doesn't have the chance of uh, taking a shot. So uh, yeah, I actually want to now evade, and I guess the game is already won. And now we want to make more damage and simply once again surprise the adversary tank so uh, bottom line in this video i wanted to show you how you should act if there are multiple light tanks in a game in this case you want to be more patient and you want to make sure that you are the, the last remaining light tank in the game because then you have a a really strong advantage um, because you can dictate um, basically the game and uh, in fact a light tank is super strong at the end of the game okay I get taken out, um, no problem whatsoever. We make 2,800 damage, 1.6k combined. So I think a decent result in the Manticore. And let's now jump into the next game. All right, second game. Once again in the Manticore, once again in a, in a tier 10 matchup. And let's first of all take a look at the map and see what options we have. Spawning on Prokhorovka in the north with a tank like the Medico, you have several options. You can first of all try to spot those tanks right here and basically outspot those medium or even light tanks which are playing super aggressively here. You can go to the 1 and 2 lane and in my opinion the 1 and 2 lane is where you have to have at least one light tank in order to hold the adversary light tank push because once the adversary light tank is able to spot your tanks they will get taken out because there's not so much cover so you have to go here and then the question is do you play let's say passively in one or another bush maybe here or maybe here or do you make some active scouting runs and that actually depends on the situation so in my opinion you have to play here if there's no other light tank and then if there's another another light tank playing on this position you might also want to flat to flank down to the uh, to the right hand side and basically help your team to win this position okay just like in the in the previous game we have to fight against multiple lightings so just like i said in the first game we want to play more passively 
and we want to make sure that we are the last tank in the battle because that can be beneficial for us and for our stats in this game so now um, what I want to, to talk about in this game is of course we want to play passively and um, um, but um, you do not have to stand still at the rear of the map uh, at the rear of the map but you can play let's say uh, make an um, uh, somewhat risky play without being um, overconfident as I would call it so in this case for example Prokhorovka is a map where you can perfectly make a an active spotting run um, but not too aggressively you should be able to fall back into cover just like I did um, simply what you want to do is you want to spot one or another opponent at the beginning of the map um, now I want to fall back and uh, of course it would be super beneficial to take out the adversary EPR <laughs> this does not work I can also not hit him I wanted to ram him after my shot did not um, did not hit and he's now driving into our base which is bad because he is able to spot all our opponents hopefully he doesn't um, cause too much damage and um, he should be able or my team should be able to take him out um, I want to of course uh, excellent okay that's what I want to see okay so the most dangerous light tank has been taken out and now it is time for us to uh, yeah simply continue what we are doing so uh, try to spot here and there and make sure that we do not lose uh, too much hp but now as the enemy um ebr 105 has been taken out it is now our time to go into this passive spout uh, sorry passive scout bush and uh, do some um, some passive scouting so in a light tank um you want to think about what the the best method of spotting is depending on the map and depending on the current gameplay so at the beginning in this game i wanted to do some active scouting without being over aggressively because i think that if you if you proceed to a passive scout position chances are that the enemy ebr 105 will spot you because that is um, after all one of the key tasks of an adversary light tank and especially of an adversary EBR 105 it goes so can we take a shot no actually we do not want to shoot in this position because we want to stand still in this bush and simply um, simply spot for our team and then um, sooner or later there is the opportunity <coughs> sorry to proceed to a bush and to conduct uh, passive scouting now another thing which is super important is you have to make sure that you help out your team so your task in a light tank is to fight against um against the other light tanks because that is what you need to do and after all as i said in the previous game you want to be the last light tank in the game but that also means that you have to take the fight against the adversary light tanks so um yeah that's simply your task and if you don't manage to take out the adversary light tanks or to help your team to take out the adversary light tanks then um you will not be able to be the last light tank at the end of the game all right so um for the time of course it is super bad that two light tanks are standing in the same position however i think that my spotting abilities are greater than the one of the t100 lt and so i want to stay in this position because once again, I think that a T100 LT is pretty much unable to outspot the other T100 LT. However, in a Manticore, my chances are, um, are higher. Now, of course, two tanks in a light, in, in a two tanks in a uh, in the two light tanks in the same position are pretty much useless. So I'm now trying to make an active uh, spotting run. Okay, I get spotted, so I need to hurry up and fall back into cover. Looks like the T100 LT is um, still in this position. So I'm thinking of, okay, what can I do next? How can I support my team? Because uh, as you saw, the T100 LT is unwilling to, to move into another position. So I want to now go to the other side because the Manticore has just been spotted on the hill. And so he has the spotting advantage on the hill. Um, and so uh, chances are that he can spot our medium tanks and they get taken out. But now as our... 100 lt has been taken out it is now my time to stay on this side because this side is from the light perspective more important than compared to the other side and so i need to 
re-evaluate the, the current game and uh, basically go back into this position. And so, yeah, I think I need to do some passive scouting. Hopefully the other light tanks will get overconfident because the chances are that they think as I retreated or as I showed some kind of retreat, they might think that I went to the other flank, which is, by the way, it's, uh, just lost. Uh, just like I said, because the Manticore does have the spotting ability over our uh, medium tanks. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I want to fall back and do some passive scouting in this um, position here. Because I'm the last light tank remaining in our team. And I certainly need to watch out for the adversary light tank not to spot our remaining tanks on the 1 and 2 lane. Because if they do so, then the adversary team will have map control and uh, will be able to win the game. Now, of course, we might lose the, the north eastern quarter of the map simply due to the adversary light tank but um, the good thing about the northern spawn is that you can easily defend um, adversary tanks pushing over the railway tracks from the let's say a or b6 position if you are simply playing super defensively and set up a good defense on the b2 and a2 position okay so um, i think this gameplay is now super super boring however just like i said in the first game i want to make sure that i'm the last light tank in the game because that would be super beneficial especially on a map like prokhorovka so i want to stand still in this position and simply wait until the adversary team does a mistake the only thing i need to to watch out closely is if my team is in a situation that they are simply losing more and more hp then i might need to be more active um because if uh, I'm the last, <laughs> the last tank in my game, uh, in my team, then of course I will not win the game on my own because the firepower is simply the weakest part of a tier 10 light tank compared to the medium tanks and the heavy tanks and also the tank destroyers in the game. Looks like my team is actually managing to... Okay, no, the STB-1 is the last tank on the zero lane, so we'll see how it goes. But nonetheless, I think it is super necessary to stay in this position. So far, only 1,600 spotting damage, but there's more to come in this game. So let's see how the STB-1 performs in the north. I'm, all, I'm constantly watching the minimap and um, I'm um, always thinking that the STB-1 might not be able to hold the flank. He somehow managed to um, take the Manticore out, which is good. So now there's only one light tank, and chances are that the T-100LT is still in, in, the, in this position, in the previous position, trying to spot um, on the 1 and 2 lane. I think in this situation, it's simply beneficial to be patient and to not risk too much, but instead to um, have the enemy team and the enemy tank drivers make the mistakes so we'll see how it goes okay there's a tank con constantly spotted okay nice that is good the object 277 is uh, moving towards the middle which is good because now i can spot him and uh, we still have two artillery players in the game so they might actually be able to take him under fire and i think um if he keeps moving upward then uh, i will constantly spot him so he actually doesn't know that he is spotted which is good so let's see okay unfortunately there's yeah there's still the t100 lt somewhere around here because the vz55 is also uh, taking shots from the adversary artillery and so we simply need to wait and we need we need to let the t92 hmc and the object 261 make um make the damage to take out the object 277 nice the, the stb1 is actually doing a pretty nice job on the zero lane um let's see let's see i do not want to move because i want to set up a trap and, and this spotting bush is, is uh, pretty nice because once the once um the adversary tank destroyers and also heavy tanks lose their patience on the one and two lane I will be able to spot them 
and this is simply my goal. Hmm, let me see. All right. So, looks like the object 277 has lost quite some HP, but is now, no, there he is, nice. We can once again spot him. Adversary artillery only does seven damage on the VZ-55. Our artillery hits the object 277 for 350, which is excellent, and I get uh, the option or the chance of uh, collecting all this spotting damage. Looks like the looks like our STB-1 is helping the other one on the 7 lane, which is okay. Looks like... Um, we'll see how it goes. This, this play is super, super aggressively. And we'll see how it goes. Looks like our gorilla is relocating. Okay. Because I'm too passive on this flank. Maybe I should... I should play more aggressively and finally spot the adversary team. So I think um, one course of action that I could do is I could uh, basically pr proceed down the, let's say, the three lane or maybe the four lane. However, first of all, the object 277 needs to be taken out of the game. That is super important because otherwise I won't be able to, to push um, into this position. So he's spotted once again. Nice. And hopefully our artillery can take him out. Nice. One shot and... Okay, our VZ-55 does not make the shot. Nice. He's now taken out, so I think this is my opportunity to proceed down the 3 or the 4 lane. And uh, to my surprise, those STB-1s are doing a pretty nice job winning the other side of the map. And now, as you can see, they are advancing to the tracks, and so now I want to be the first one spotting all the remaining tanks because because that is what I want to do in my light tank. I want to be the last tank on the battlefield in order to collect all the spotting damage of the remaining adversary tanks. And so here you go. And bam. I take a shot. You can take him out. Nice. And now I am the last remaining light tank. And look at the positioning. I am spotting now all the remaining tanks and all those tanks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tanks of my team can take those tanks under fire as soon as they get spotted from me. So excellent. So I take one active scout uh, drive and now look at the damage. Look at the damage. That's what I want to see. This is why it is so beneficial to be the last remaining light tank on the battlefield. And so yes, this is why you should be patient and you should not try to be let's say over risky in a light tank you need to be the last one on the battlefield because that is how you can make all this sweet spotting damage so 9400 spotting damage in the manticore and i think a super successful game yes it was a bit boring at the in the middle of the game however now you saw why it is beneficial to stay passively here and there to save your hp to try to take out the other light tanks and um, to be the last light tank in the game. Okay, third game. This time we're spawning on Pilsen. And let's first of all, once again, take a look at the map and see what options we have. Spawning on Pilsen in the north with the light tank, you actually do not have too many options. One of which is, or one of those options is to go to the zero lane and try to outspot those adversary tanks the problem is that this is a super risky gameplay and if you are unlucky you will also get spotted and then very quickly get taken out of the game what i like to do is i like to go to the middle because in my opinion the middle is actually a very decent position from which you can spot tanks which are proceeding on the zero lane but then also hide because there is some cover here and there with those uh, small hills so that is the preferred position that i want to play by the way not only in a light tank but also in a medium tank all right so that is where we want to go now in this game we are encountering only one light tank so we talked about um, how important it is to be the last light tank in the in the game we talked about that you need to try to counter the adversary light tanks and we um, saw gameplay which is kind of passively because um, it's the easiest thing to simply let the adversary tanks do the mistakes. Now in this game, I want to show you that you can also be more, let's say proactively 
um, and try to actively take out the adversary light tank so that you are the last light tank in the game. So on Pilsen, which is uh, not per se a good uh, good map for, for, for light tanks, um, I like to go to the middle. Yes, of course, you can go to the zero lane and you can especially do this with the Manticore. However, in my opinion, chances are that over-aggressive light or medium tanks will simply push you out and then, yes, you will make some spotting damage. However, you will also get spotted and then taken out by the adversary team. So instead, I like to use all those little hills here in order to be able to spot those tanks on the zero lane and that is especially that can work uh, that can work super super nicely and um, as you can see i managed to spot three adversary tanks which are taken under fire by my team and after only one and a half minutes i was able to do 2000 spotting damage which is nice so you can not only try to control the zero lane from the zero lane itself but also from the middle which is why i like to play here in this position so 2700 spotting damage right at the beginning of the game our team is playing super defensively which is nice simply because we only have as of now two tanks playing on the zero lane so let me see can i also get a shot onto this tank i do not have to, i do not want to stand still on the hill because uh, if i peek out and if i stand still then i by myself will take shots from adversary tanks oh, that was super super unfortunate that's uh, super fortunate um, I will take shots by adversary tanks from, let's say, the H8 position, um, but maybe also from the zero lane. So, as long as those tanks are advancing on the zero lane, I will be able to spot them at least here and there, and then help my team to defend the enemy push on the zero lane. So all I want to do is I want to peek out and uh, go on top of those little hills here in order to spot those tanks on the zero lane that's what i want to do 4200 spotting damage so the the, the only bad thing is we um i think from this, from uh, this position will not be able to spot the adversary light tank which is the mx 13105 which is by by the way in my opinion the overall best light best tier 10 lighting in the game but so far it looks like it is working i want to go to this hill nice we spot the fb 4005 excellent he should be an easy target and you know what i can also make some damage to this tank nice that was a hit i think so 600 damage about approximately or 700 damage Okay, cannot spot him once again. So yeah, in this game we are playing more actively because I want to spot those tanks on the zero lane. So let's make an active scout move and let's once again try to spot the FV4005. Okay, is there a... Yes, I get spotted but I want to fully aim in and hit the lower... Um, the lower frontal armor okay I get pushed up by the leopard unfortunately it doesn't connect the first shot so I need to hurry up and the TVP is taking a shot I need to waggle around and use my speed in order to go back of course he hits me with HE I would do the same thing because my armor is paper thin and now I simply need to evade out of this situation um, perfect can I make it back yes I think so because of course the firepower advantage is on the side of the leopard one especially if he uses he so let me see let me see we still have the problem that the adversary light tank is in the game okay looks like the leopard one hmm how can i mess with this tank um I think I cannot. You know what? I will make an... I'm not spotted if I move out like this. I think I should make a spotting run to the AMX 13105. But first of all, let me see whether this tank makes a mistake. Because I want to set up a trap for him. No, but I think he doesn't. Okay. So let me see. Do I spot tanks if I move out here? No, and I actually also do not get spotted. So it looks like the 
AMX13105 is... Huh, maybe it's behind, he's behind the cover on the C0 position, maybe. Okay, I spot... Okay, the Leopard 1 retreats, which is good. And now I think I can focus. I mean, every light, every other tank has been spotted in the game. Apart from the MX. So, let me see. He must be on the zero lane. Okay, don't get spotted. So, every tank has been spotted. There's the TVP still on the zero lane, most likely. There's one leopard tank, which has not been spotted. And then there's the... Oh, here you go. Okay, the... MX is spotted in this position, so you know what, he's now down to being one-shotable and I think I need to make sure to take him out because once again, if I can be the last remaining light tank, then the advantage is on my side. So let's make a bit more aggressive push, hopefully I do not get shot by the TBP. And where is he, where is he, here we go, and here we go, bam take him out nice and now i need to once again hurry up fortunately the shot from the leopard one doesn't make any damage super lucky and so i still have some hp on my side okay perfect so now i'm the last light tank in the game and now i can once again play a bit more offensively hopefully my team will catch up and also advance okay now i can i think i can use the bushes in order to outspot the the adversary tanks um, there's the leopard one maybe and also the tvp on this side which is down to being one shotable which is good um, because i certainly do, do not want to mess with an four short autoloader tank okay there's only one tank following me super bad gameplay by my team in my opinion we should now hurry up because uh, the game is relatively close it's not that we have already won the game a27 <coughs> So let's see. Uh -huh. mm, okay, Leopard is uh, in this position. And do I get spotted? No, I do not get spotted. So it looks like the TVP has also retreated. So let me see. Our Porsche 155 is still standing at the rear of the map, which is... Here you go. Nice spam, one shot. Which is super, super bad. Super defensive gameplay. He could simply advance alongside with our stb1 and simply dominate this this flank okay. okay here's the jagdpanzer e100 okay and now i want to try to get map control for our team 1100 damage 6200 spotting damage so far in the game and of course i do not want to get uh, taken out by the leopard which is most likely in some of the bushes on the K lane. Can I take a shot onto the Jagdpanzer E100? Let's see. Okay, Leopard 1 flanked all the way to the B1 position. Is now fighting against our Stritzwagen 103B. And let me see. Alright. Um. I think it is now time to help the IS-7 and also the Stritzwang 103B. Um, in a light tank, you should always try to, um, how can I call it, to bring your, your teammates in the game. So, of course, there are some players which are not following you, um, just like the Porsche 155, but you have to try and help out those tanks and you have to bring them back into the game and spot for them there's nothing more useless than a light tank player which is going to let's say the sweet spot on the map but disregarding the positioning of the of the uh, of the teammates because um it doesn't matter how many and how many uh, adversary tanks you spot if your team is unable to take them under fire then your whole spotting is useless and that's um I would say that it is that it is uh, not the fault of the of the teammates uh, to be not to not to be positioned in the correct position. However, I mean, what can you do if your team is not behaving like you want it to be? 
Okay, Leopard 1 is uh, pushing it back. Unfortunately, he's able to take out the, the IS-7. So, I think the Leopard 1 player is pretty damn good. And so, the game is... Yeah, super difficult. So, here's the other Leopard 1. Huh. Yeah. They're not in a platoon, by the way. So let me see. So I want to fall back and now hurry up in order to help out the Fosh 155. Because I think it is super important that this tank stays in the game. So let's hurry up to the previous position. Okay, the... <laughs> uh, super unfortunate. Now the... The... Um, Fosh 155 has been taken out and now with the US being down to... Uh, being one-shotable it is simply the time to get the best out of the game and to spot for him so i think this is a good position because um no matter if those tanks are here go Let's see oh no he turned he made a left hand turn and so um he uh, basically did not go where i expected him and so my shot did not hit the the, the leopard one Okay, so I need to help out the Judas, and you know what? I will take a shot onto the stake. Nice. And you know what? I need to help him, uh, but I do not want to get shot by the Leopard 1. And so I hide behind the wreck of the F4005. Um, and let me take him out. Here we go. Nice. Okay. So back into the game. Um, game is now a bit closer. The Judas uh, is still one shotable but that's just how it is and we managed to take out the leopard one here go there's the other leopard one so i have to uh, fall back um oh and there's the other tank okay the tvp hmm but i need to okay he's uh he's pushing me he's pushing me okay yeah what can you do okay so um game is lost i guess and um yeah leopard one could take me out but i think this was a good example of how to play your light tank a bit more proactively without risking too much but with trying to not only spot for your team but outspot the adversary tanks especially the light tank now the light tank actually managed to to um proceed down the zero lane without getting spotted by me but i think we did a nice job of helping our team and i think it was not my fault that we actually lost the game Anyway, so let's now jump into the next game. Alright, fourth and certainly last game in this video. The video is already a bit uh, a bit long. We're spawning uh, once again in a tier 10 match. And let's first of all take a look at the map and see what options we have. Spawning on Murovanka with the Manticore in the north. There is basically one option that you should do. And that is to go to this position and to outspot the other light tank. Light tanks. Usually, the the other light tanks is the other light tank is also playing this position simply because winning this position um, leads to being able to outspot the other tanks. So, for example, if I would uh, be able to outspot to get rid of this light tank, I could then spot those tanks with moving here and create an advantage for our team in order to win the eight, nine, and zero lane. The same is true for the other lighting, so in my opinion it doesn't make sense to stay somewhere here um, or go down to this position because um, there's not too much cover. But um, to go to this position and try to fight against the enemy light tank. Okay, so once again we are spawning in a tier 10. Okay, what are you doing? We're spawning in a tier 10 um, match with only one light tank. And so I want to go where I think my team needs me and where I can spot the other tanks. Of course, we need to be cautious because uh, we do not want to get spotted by the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen. I mean, I have the spotting advantage on my side, certainly with the Manticore. However, if he's playing super aggressively, then I don't know. He might uh, he might uh, make some some let's say some strange move and then take me out. And that's not what I want to do because I want to, as I said multiple times in this video, be the last tank in the game. So nice. We can spot one FV4005, which is always good. 
because he's an easy target. And nice, we can spot another another tank. Excellent. Even make a sh okay, I do not know where this shot went. To be honest, I do not know. Like 99 from 100 pixels out of 100 pixels were actually on the tank. Okay, but sometimes you're simply unlucky. Okay, so we can spot the Leopard 1. Nice. Maybe we bounce a shot on the Leopard 1. What is going on? Wargaming, what is going on? I don't get spotted, so... The question is, where is the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen? Where is it? Here we go, nice, and bam. First shot. This time we are not, not unlucky. And 408 damage on our side. Okay, oh, Rheinmetall Panzerwagen is on the other side. That is extremely nice, because now we know that we have the spotting advantage on our flank, which is excellent. Okay, can we track him? Nice, we track him. And the problem is that we do not have any support on our side. Look at where our team is positioned. That is super bad. Now, we have the spotting advantage on our side simply because the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen is on the other side. However, what can I do if I'm the only tank on this flank? So I need to retreat. And that is basically another thing that we can talk about. You, you have to, as a, as, a, as, a, as a medium, sorry, as a light tank, you are a support tank, so you have to react on what your team is doing. Once again, just like I pointed out in the previous game, there's nothing more useless than a light tank spotting tanks if your teammates are not in the position to shoot at those tanks. So I want to fall back and retreat and set up a spotting location from which I can spot for my team. Now I think this one here is a bit too passively because after all chances are that those medium tanks will advance via the zero lane and then via the A lane and so I need to make sure that I spot them once they approach our... Po yeah, that's what, I that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay, so you know what? I will try to make damage by myself simply because I feel it is necessary and I want to reverse into this bush simply because I can evade out of the situation much quicker which is maybe necessary if so if this tank proceeds to our base. Yep, I'm now spotted, which is okay. But I have the support from the Centurion Action X. And so that is okay. Now, hopefully the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen did not change the flank. And so the spotting advantage is on my side. And of course, I need to make sure that our team, uh, that, that I spot for my team. So let me see. I cautiously move into this bush and <clears throat> let's fully aim in and now we can take them out excellent okay so this this danger is basically removed and so i can go further down into this bush let's try to fully aim in the the gun of the manticore is not the most precise one okay as you can see here However, I think uh, in this game it is necessary to try to add my firepower to the fight. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm spotted and I get shot by the adversary artillery. Um, let me see. <clears throat> so I do not want to use my repair kit, or oh, sorry, my first aid kit at this... Uh, stage of the game huh. I think it is super necessary super important to spot this uh, this flank so that the adversary teams uh, the, the adversary tanks cannot uh, go into our base via the zero and the a lane so that is why I am still in this position plus um, I think the open field here in front of me is a huge death zone that I do not want to cross um, at least not at this point in time. So let's see. Okay, perfect. I can spot this tank. Let me see. And use the double bush mechanic so that I do not get spotted. Um, I track him, but I do not make any damage. So that I do not get spotted um, once I take a shot. Let me see. Of course, he now knows that I am in this position and that he has no chance... 
and that he will get outspotted once he advances so he's most likely falling back which is good because now that means that he's not pushing our base okay he might actually do so yeah, bounce the shot super unfortunate in this game super unfortunate <clears throat> centurion action x also bounces but we still have two artilleries which is good and now here we go we can take them out excellent so 4.5k combined already a decent result in the manticore and there's more to come okay now that's the looks like the primitive panzerwagen has at least relocated a little bit and you know what nine to six so i think it is now time to advance so let me see the Reno Toronto is on my side on this uh, side of the map the centurion action x is not gorilla is also not but the primitive panzerwagen is so we can trade one for one which is good for me because I still have more HP than he does. Plus my alpha damage is higher. And so let me see. I have the support from the Centurion Action X. However, I think it is time to make a flanking move. So let me see. Um... Most likely this tank will fall back and I want to support the, the MX-50B. Okay, Reno Chironta has also fallen back. And so I want to go via the middle in order to make a flanking move and then appear by surprise to the adversary tanks. So... <clears throat> let me see. Looks like the game is won and at the end of the game, what you need to do in a light tank... <coughs> sorry. You have to be the first one approaching the remaining adversary positions in order to get the spotting damage and also be able to do more damage on your own. Okay, um, I lost the spot of the MX, so I certainly do not want to approach an Reno Toronto with the three-shot autoloader gun all on my own. So I want to wait until our tanks have um, have advanced. And then, then it is time for me to make this final move. Okay, I get spotted by the Rheumatite Panzerwagen, which is bad. And I need to evade and hide. Here you go. Now he's spotted. Can I take a shot? I need to fully aim in. And bam, take him out. Nice. And now with the support of the of the Centurion Action X and the Udus 1516, it is now time to make our final move and get more damage. So... I'm actually a little bit late because the Centurion Action X is driving full speed to the Reno. So yeah, I did not spot this tank, which is bad because I'm, I do not get the spotting damage of this tank, which is super unfortunate. That's just how it is. Maybe I can get one more shot at least. And then things are good with the current results. Okay, he's taking a shot to me, which is bad, but I can get one in return. Nice. And so I make 3.3k damage and 2.4k combined which is excellent let's hide a little bit and maybe no he's taken out okay yeah so um all in all i think those games showed how you can play a light tank a bit more successfully and um, showed some options that you have in your light tank of course the manticore is the best spotter on tier 10 but um as you saw in this game you can also make damage in this uh, in this tank and uh, overall it is important to say that you should not only play a light tank with once on with with uh, with one regard but you should always be flexible in the game especially if you're playing a light tank so um yeah another decent result in the manticore all right guys that was it for today with some more light tank gameplay what do you think about this tank class do you like to play light tanks? Do you agree that lots of light tank players do not really know what to do, at least frequently in the game? And do you agree that with a light tank you can decide games if you manage to stay alive at the end of the game? Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. This really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you find this video extremely helpful, then feel free to support me via Super Thanks. This way you can make a one-time donation. You just have to click this button underneath the video. 
If you adore this channel and you want to consistently support me, then consider subscribing to my channel or become a member once again with the click of a button underneath the video. Thanks a lot and I see you next time in another World of Tanks video.